you, what advice would you give to other people that want to have their own app eventually? Yeah. I mean, honestly, it would be to just start with what you have in your hands today mm -hmm. and do the best with, you know, with that right there. Right. So mm -hmm. if, if all you have is a, your blog or your video show or your podcast, like yeah. fill it with that. Well, guys, welcome to another episode of Millennials in Ministry. I'm your host, Erin V. Lashley, and today I am privileged to have on the show with me Ashley Williams. Welcome to the show, Ashley. Hello. I'm so happy to yes. be here. Yes, absolutely. Ashley is a mother of two boys. She's wife to Terry, the trainer, who if you saw the episode last year, we interviewed him last year. She's the owner of The League, which is an elite fitness facility in Houston, Texas. She's affectionately known as The Bird, the brains behind the business. And uh, she's a small business strategist and also a serial entrepreneur. So it is a privilege, honestly, for me to be able to talk to you about business. And I can't wait to get it started. So awesome. Every yeah, how are you doing today? How's everything going for you? It's going good. I love Mondays. I know people can, you know, have the Monday blues, but for me, Mondays I'm just like on and ready to go and get at the week. So it's been yeah. super productive. I'm the type of person I'm just alive when I'm productive, when I can look at the day and, and say, I've done this, 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 and this. So that's yeah. what today was like. So it's been a great day. Hey, that's awesome. Well, how about for the people that don't know that much about you? Could you just introduce yourself a little bit? Tell us about your history. And I'm really curious, when did you become so passionate about small business strategy? I feel like it's in your blood, but I want to hear the story from you. Okay, well, okay, so I'm from I'm from a smaller town, Texas City, Texas, down by Galveston here in Texas. Um, it's a suburb of Houston. I okay. graduated with only 18 people in my senior class in high school. So what? super small. I went from there to the University of Texas, which is obviously a huge university. So had a bit of culture shock and had to kind of like <laughs> figure things out. And learn. And, uh, it was kind of crazy, but I loved, the, I loved being there. I got to travel the world. I studied abroad in Italy and I went to Ghana for a semester to do a social wow. development project there. Best experience ever. One of my favorite really? experiences ever. Yes. Um, and then I went from there to New York and I worked on Wall Street in investment banking. I was an investment banking mm -hmm. analyst for two years. And the thing about that is that I had no investment banking internship, which almost everyone in the program had. It was kind of like a prerequisite. And so okay. it was similar to my college experience, having to kind of figure things out. I didn't know what I was doing. And, and yeah. that's, that's kind of a theme in my life is kind of just being able to figure things out. So I was there and um, I loved what I was doing to an extent. It was crazy. I was working crazy hours, but I wasn't fulfilled by it. Like it wasn't so much the craziness, the hustle. It was more of at the end of the day, I'm helping this big bank make a whole bunch of money. And that doesn't really excite me. That doesn't make it worth it for me to be here till 3 a.m. every night, you know? Mm -hmm. And yeah. I basically began to meditate on like what I would do if I, no one paid me, what I yeah. would do if I knew I would succeed. And I made this list of things and I put it on my <laughs> desktop at, at my office. And um, I realized over meditating on that, that I wanted to be an entrepreneur. But I didn't mm. have a restaurant or a gym or a thing. I just wanted to work the logistics and do the back, the behind the scenes part. And yeah. I was actually, we, my husband and I, we had dated for three and a half years. We weren't together when I was in New York. Just okay. <laughs> and, and we, <laughs> That's another opportunity. <laughs> yeah. We <laughs> got back together. I moved back to Houston and he wanted to have a gym. He was killing it in the fitness game in Houston. And he wanted mm. to have a gym. And I said, look, we can do it now. He thought it'd be like years down the road. I was like, no, I don't have a job because I had left I had left that job wanting to do something else that didn't work out. And I was like, I want to be an entrepreneur. We can do this. And he was like, okay, let's go. And we launched wow. the league in 2013. And oh my gosh, it was crazy, especially that first year. It was yeah. a lot easier to do with no kids, <laughs> you know, <laughs> basically working nonstop through the weekends. But it grew to where we were able to launch our second location in 2015. Um, so and we had two locations for a while until we basically outgrew that first space. It was just no parking, not enough space. And so we consolidated everything to that bigger second location in 2017. And um, 
it's like now a well oiled machine. Like it's great. That's We're cool. super blessed. The community is amazing. And yeah, no, this is really long, but <laughs> then no, this I is watched... great. okay, good. Yeah. So earlier this year, I, um, I, for years I've had people come to me asking me about like, how do I do this for my business? I need to set this up mm -hmm. or I have these questions and I was just helping people because I love it. It excites me. Mm -hmm. You asked where that started. And I mean, I think it started as a kid. You could ask my mom. I was always trying to like make bracelets or sell lemonade or yeah. do, like, <laughs> on the side. It was just something that excited me, like the whole process yeah. of business and all that. So, um, yeah, I was doing this just for free and for fun, but it got to be so much to where I didn't have capacity. And I'm looking like I should maybe create an actual entity, actual mm. structure, like a framework for this so that I'm able to kind of create more boundaries, basically, because I'm the kind of person that. I want to jump in there with you. Like, like I'm going to meet you at your house right. and get on the computer and help you on your website and actually do all the things. And like that's yeah. practical for my life, you know, <laughs> so having this structure helped me have some boundaries around it. And I launched in November and oh my gosh, I got more of a response than I planned on. So wow. it was, oh, hitting the ground running again, but it's been such a blessing. So that's kind of the background there. That's so cool, Ashley. Like, I'm super proud of you, and I just love what you and your husband do, and I love that you're a team together, and you your gifts complement each other, yeah. but anytime, like, I've either talked to Terry on the interview or ever heard him talk about business, he's always giving so much credit to you that you are the brains behind <laughs> business, you know? Like, I just love that he loves you so much, and he just, like, you guys' gifts work so well together, um, and I'm so excited about this business that you've launched. Um, obviously, like, I, me and my friend have launched a business. I'm really interested in all of that type of stuff, and I can't wait to dig into your podcast more because you have a podcast, too, which yeah. is so cool. Yeah, so, guys, like, make sure you check that out. But, Ashley, I want to ask you, um, when it comes to – business plans because i know that you mentioned like having successful this you attribute the success of the league to the business plan you had for the league so yes. can you talk about that yes. like what makes up a really great business plan yes so it's funny because people think of business plans as just like i'm gonna check the box like i don't really know if i really need it i'm not gonna really invest a lot of time there but then they're faced with questions that they're not really able to answer or even they're booking calls with me and i'm asking them about how this ties with that or how this works and they don't really have an answer because they haven't really thought about the whole picture. I think when people mm -hmm. think about business plans, they think about like their marketing plan, like a strategic plan, or they think about the financial model and the, the financial projections as like a business plan, but it yeah. really is the whole picture, why you're doing what you're doing and how it all kind of works together. So um, it's definitely a first step that I encourage people to take because you'll sound a lot more knowledgeable when you're maybe having to get a bank loan or go out to investors or even partner with someone if someone mm -hmm. asks you questions that you don't know how to answer it's it's pretty tough so yeah we we had a business our business plan and it's so funny to look back on the first one because the name of our gym is the league elite training facility but initially it was league of legends and mm -hmm. i actually sent my business plan to my director in new york on wall street amazing for her to do this she looked through it and gave me feedback and she was like you should change it to just the league, you know? And so I say that to explain that it doesn't have to be concrete and set in stone, but it's something that you're able to adapt over time, but it at least helps you have more informed decisions. Another mm -hmm. thing with being married and in business together is that we don't always agree, you know? People are like, <laughs> y'all are just so like perfect. And put us on this pedestal. It's like, no, ma'am. Like we obviously don't always agree. It does yeah. mean that I focus on all the business stuff. He focuses on all the fitness stuff. But I mean, of course, there's times where we just don't agree. And it's great to go back to our business plan, like which decision aligns best with our mission, our purpose, or mm -hmm. our marketing strategy that, that we discuss. Like, you know, what what really aligns best, best with what we're doing above Ashley's opinion or Terry's opinion. So there's so many yeah. good things that come from having a really solid business plan. Yeah. So specifically with the league, can you go into that a little bit more? So I know some people like in the fitness world or even some other small business owners, like what specifically in my business plan should I have yeah. and how will I know that it will be successful if I include X, Y, and Z? I know you mentioned a little bit about that, but maybe even some specifics about like, okay, for the league, we did this yeah. and we attribute the success of the business to this specific thing. You know what I mean? Absolutely. So one was our purpose and our mission. And mm -hmm. people think of that as like just the mission statement, like this is what I'm doing, but it really should be woven into every single thing you do. 
Um, I really believe the success, the success of a le the league is because we didn't think of it as a gym. We thought of it as a community, a place for people to escape work or whatever situation they might be in mm -hmm. and feel strong, um, a place where they can get 1% better every day. So it's holistically about the person. And that was pulled out in our purpose. That's what we, that's mm -hmm. where our, our hearts were on the business. And so that trickled into like our marketing, you know, we, yeah. there's so many things that you could think about with marketing. Um, but we, we tried a lot of different things and they just didn't work because they didn't tie with our mission. Like one point we tried to outsource our social media, have someone mm. do it for us, like another company out in Austin. And it was just a disaster. They didn't <laughs> have our heart, you know, it didn't work. And like we, if we would have, so taking the time to stop and think, okay, does this really tie with our mission or purpose? No, yeah. if some algorithm is going to be trying to figure out how to connect with our people online, that's probably not going to tie well with loving people well and, and our mission behind the league. So things like yeah. that. So purpose for sure. And then also team. And this is something that people mm -hmm. look over, but especially if you are just starting out and you need capital for your business, team is huge um, because that's why someone would want to invest in your business because mm -hmm. at the end of the day, you have no historical financials, you know? So right. <laughs> investors, banks, like they're going to look at money. But if you don't have that, then, well, who are these people? How are they qualified to do this? You know? Mm -hmm. So Terry having the background in fitness, having this great social media following, but also just giving out a lot of free content. That, so he had such a good, strong tribe was huge yeah. you know and then obviously yeah. my background in wall street wall street sounds super sexy you know um, <laughs> it does though at the end of the day, it was just like me having to grind and figure stuff out and like learning yeah. from that so anyway mm -hmm. team is important and then obviously your packages and pricing like what you're going to offer and how that's unique from the competition so when you're thinking mm -hmm. about competition um people it's not so much like my gym versus the gym down the street. It's more so like, how am I, how are we going to be uniquely positioned? You know, what are we going to yeah. offer that's different? There's a whole lot of photographers out there. There's a whole lot of bloggers out there. What are you going to do that's different? How are you going to meet yeah. your specific audience in a unique way? Yeah. Um, and so like the whole, your products, your packages, um, your pricing, your marketing, and then also in like the competitive you know, landscape. And then a big part of it is your financials. And this is mm -hmm. the part that a lot of people are like afraid about and yeah. just don't want to really think about or focus on, but it's so key, you know? <laughs> like, is this a viable business or is this just a hobby, you know? Um, yeah. How will you like, you know, actually capitalize on this? It's a huge game changer for your business. And, mm -hmm. and it's not something that has to be scary. Like sometimes if you just dig into the numbers, you'll actually pull things out like, oh, this is a lot easier than I thought but you don't want wow. to skip over that. Um, so yeah. what we did is we had um, like a, a revenue build out, which is basically like a mm -hmm. business model, all the different packages and services we were going to offer and how much we would charge for that. And then also yeah. like financial projections. And at the end of the day, financial projections are just like, I don't want to say BS, but you know, <laughs> we did our yeah. best, but no one knows what this business is going to do. If there's no historical data to back it up. If you're a new business. Yeah. Um, but we did have that. And then we were raising money. So the very last page of our business plan had like a transaction structure. And it yeah. talked about debt options, debt equity options, how that would look and like where our startup costs were coming from. So again, the more clear you can get, um, the better. And not just yeah. if you're raising capital from investors, but I mean, even if I wasn't, I would think of it as if I were, because you're basically yeah. going to grill yourself hard enough to make sure that this makes sense. Like this is actually really good, you know? Yeah. This is yeah. Work. yeah. That's so cool. Like, you're just so smart, and I really am enjoying talking to you. For real. I'm really curious, too. Like, um, Terry just launched Terry the Trainer app, which is so cool. Like, I'm signed up for it. It's, I mean, I've really been enjoying it. It's really great. Yeah, yeah, it's really cool. Like, I just love everything that you guys are doing. And also, I had a business trip in Houston last a few months ago and I was able to visit the restaurants that you guys were involved with. I was able to go to the uh the league, which was really cool too. Nice. So I just love it. Like I like to personally taste, feel, touch things the people that I know and love, you know, and support yeah. it. Yeah. And so um it's just been so cool for me to have had those experiences and then to see it grow and develop into this whole app thing, which I know that you guys as business owners are strategic about the platforms and stuff that you're releasing. So I'm curious like What's the thought process behind that, like as an extension of the league or, you know, where do you want it to go and all of that? I just want to just hear your thoughts. Yes, absolutely. So that was birthed um, out of basically our clients at the league saying things like, 
man, I'm going to be on this trip for three months. I'm going to be in Europe. And is mm -hmm. there any way that I could like get the workouts or can you email them to me? Or even like, I'm going to be on a trip this weekend. Can I get some workouts to do in the hotel? Mm -hmm. And then beyond our clients, there were people all over the world, really. Chicago, yeah. Florida, like Brazil saying, hey, yeah. do you ever have a league here? We had some people also reach out about franchising the league. And mm -hmm. we did dabble with it for a little bit, like, you know, thinking through that process. But at the end of the day, honestly, we were just a little bit too afraid to, like, give our baby to, like, Brazil yeah. or, like, you know, these <laughs> we can't really control yeah. how the owners make it work and all that. And, I mean, yeah, we just decided not to go that route. And so we were like, yeah. how can we bring workouts to their pocket, to their phone, basically? Mm -hmm. And so we came up with the idea of an app. And so it helps. And then there are even people in Houston who just live, if, if you know about Houston, it's super spread out. So they yeah. live in Sugarland or, you know, one of these different suburbs. And they're like, I just can't make it to the gym, but I wish I could train with you guys. Are y'all going to mm -hmm. have a Sugarland location or a Pearland location? Right. But now we can say you can train with us, you know, through your phone. And so that was really the the heart behind that. That's so cool. That's really awesome. So what do you feel like is a key, like if somebody wants to have an app, you know what I mean, like for their business, um, what are, what's the key to having a growing audience with the app or how do you continue to stay engaged with those people? Like I know it's a new platform for you guys, yeah. but I also know like having your own platform is something that's interesting to a few people that I know, you know, social media changes and it's great to put free content out there and everything. But when you own your platform, that's, uh, you know, a really great business move in, in one sense. Yeah. Um, but how do you, what advice would you give to other people that want to have their own app eventually? Yeah. I mean, honestly, it would be to just start with what you have in your hands today mm -hmm. and do the best with, you know, with that right there. Right. So if, if all you have is a, your blog or your video show or your podcast, like, yeah. kill it with that. Because the truth is, is that this app, the, the beauty behind it or the um, leverage we have from it didn't start even with the league, you know, in 2013, mm -hmm. the clientele and the platform we built there. It really started back in, like, 2008 or whenever Terry started building that Twitter platform. Yeah. He didn't even have huh. Twitter as much now. So you don't... You don't you don't live so much dedicated to the actual platform. It's really the purpose in your heart, you know, mm -hmm. purpose yeah. on the platform. Boom. <laughs> yeah. yeah. That's so great. Don't tie yourself so much to how it looks today. Just again, mm -hmm. the heart behind what you're doing, your purpose, like that's, what's going to really fuel you. That's what's going to really take you super far. Because like I said, mm -hmm. back in 2008 or whatever, when he was building up this following on Twitter and really literally just giving out so much free information that people were like, wow, this is amazing. I want to follow mm -hmm. this guy. That yeah. led to, he could have never imagined that one day he'd have his own fitness app. You know what I mean? Right. So sometimes you can't even see what's out ahead of you. But when you put people first and when you make it about something much bigger than yourself, like, yeah, that's when you're in the sweet spot, for sure. That's so cool. So, Ashley, tell me about the packages and things that you offer as a consulting business and a consulting firm um, so people can know if they want to reach out to you and work with you on their business. Like, what are the next steps for them? Sure. So, um, when I launched Bird Williams Consulting, oh, my goodness, I had one idea of what it would look like. And, again, I don't hold tight <laughs> to that. And it has evolved in so many ways. So, when I launched, yeah. I had no idea that I'd have a podcast. But wow. a month later, here we are, you know. Um, <laughs> so I'm just kind of going with it. But initially, I thought what I had were different packages where you could book time with me. And I mm -hmm. thought people would want to basically pay for my time. But well, when people book consultations that are free, which any of you can book a free consultation, mm -hmm. um, they didn't know what they didn't know. You know, they didn't know what they mm -hmm. needed. They didn't know the time that it would take. They would just kind of like word vomit, dump on me all the stuff with their business. And I thought, okay, yeah. I have to restructure this. So uh -huh. I moved to what I'm doing now, which is um, basically we have a consultation call and then I submit a proposal to you based on what you can identify that you need. So it would be great if you could identify like, these are the things that I need. This is what winning looks like, or this is what, you know, done mm -hmm. looks like or success for yeah. me right now in this season. And then I yeah. can create a custom proposal based on your needs. And then we can go from there because again, people, people are like, I don't know. Like I was like all these things from marketing, the financial model, this is mess. So yeah. that's how, how I'm kind of doing it now. But I will say that for the next two months, I'm going to be laser focused in my course. I don't know if we've mentioned it, but it is mm. on developing a profitable business plan. It's called Making Sense of It. And That's I'm awesome. going to have, yeah, a four-week interactive online course where 
we, at the end of it, you're going to have that dynamic business plan that you're able to like move forward confidently within your business. So mm -hmm. I'm going to do like laser focus in that group because each week it'll be like the content will be dripped. So you'll have every Sunday, you'll get the content for the week for four weeks. And okay. in the Facebook group, we'll have a private Facebook group that's just for the course. I'll be doing yeah. a weekly Q&A, but I'm also going to just be like all up in there you know, giving people feedback, answering questions, that sort of thing. So if you do book a consultation call with me over the next two months, I should say through February, we'll definitely okay. have that call, but I'm not going to be working directly with individuals until the end of the course. So we would actually okay. to work um, in March. That's awesome. That's yeah. really, really cool. Yeah. Um, thank you so much, Ashley, for this. Like, this has been so great. And I, I just really just love everything about you and your family. Okay. And you guys are just... Even from afar, I've been such great examples for me, truthfully. Like, I've told my family about you. My mom's on. I, Mom, this is Ashley who I was telling you about. <laughs> so, Hi, Mom. I love it. Yes. <laughs> yes, yes. So final question, Ashley, as we close out, I'd like to ask all of my guests, what's one piece of advice that you would give to other millennials who are wanting to make an impact in their community? Hmm. I would say the one piece of advice would be to do it afraid. To mm -hmm. do it even though you're afraid. I mean, that looks so differently for people, but I mean, no one, me, the mega stars or whatever people you see on Instagram, no one's <laughs> walking out there just never afraid. Like you're supposed, if it's like, if your dream is easy or simple, or if it doesn't make you feel a little afraid, you're doing something wrong. So dream mm -hmm. big and do it afraid to start put one foot in front of the other. And you'll look back and be like, wow, that all made sense. Like that all worked together for good. Right. Um, so and just keeping it, like I said, purpose over platform or purpose over anything else. Like, God, yeah. this is for you. Like, like I, like I tell, we, we say this all the time, even in interviews, like if tomorrow God was like, the league is not what we want you to be focused on anymore. We'd be like, all right. If tomorrow God was like, no more Bird Williams consulting. I'd be like, all right, like God, what do you yeah. have next? You know, because when you yeah. get there, then there's just such a freedom. You're free because I mean, I'm going to do my very best. I'm going to be excellent in everything I do because that's that's my heart and that's what God calls us to do. But, yeah. but at the end of the day, it's not about how it looks. It's about who it's for. And it's for mm -hmm. God and it's for all of the people that I'm going to bless through this business. It's it's not about me. So it makes even moments like this where maybe I could feel a little afraid to go on Instagram live. Uh, <laughs> it makes it less You're doing pressure. great, by the way. <laughs> it makes it a lot less pressure because, again, this isn't yeah. about me. It's for whoever might come across this that might get one little tip that can help them. Like, that's why I'm doing what I'm doing. So come just on. keeping that in mind, I think you'll go super far. Ashley... You're a rock star. Thank you so I'm much. I'm, like you did such a great job and it was so great having you on here and we'll definitely stay in touch. Absolutely. I'm cheering for you, rooting for you. I love I'm everything you're doing. I'm Thank so you. proud of what you're doing. I love, like I said, it doesn't even feel like we've never talked in person. So that's a lot <laughs> about your energy and your heart and your personality. Yeah. Like that's beautiful. I love what you're doing and I'm so proud of you too. Thank you, Ashley. Thank you so much. We'll definitely stay in touch. And again, thank you for your time. Yeah. And I'll talk to you next time. All righty. Thanks. Have a good night. Bye. You too. Bye. Hey, thanks so much for watching the Millennials and Ministry YouTube channel. It means the world to me that you're here. Click subscribe so you can get notified the next time something new comes out or click that bell to get it sent straight to your email. Visit AaronVLashley.com for more info. And thanks again for watching.